where did you get these legs from? I'm going to go ahead and ask you. So I got these literally a couple of days ago in Detroit. I got my makeup done by a girl named um, Heidi. And she has the coolest place. Like, you don't just go get your makeup done. It's a boutique. So mm-hmm. there's, like, clothing in there. She has a full line of makeup. But, you know, some people come out with makeup lines and they got, like, lip gloss and, like, maybe eyeliner. Baby has serum and face wash and, like, literally anything you can buy from Sephora she has. So I thought it was really cool. Um, and then she had these glasses, too. And I felt like they were perfectly extra for me. So I put them on today. Yeah, you do extra well. You know what's so funny is I always cared so much about what people thought about me. I was very much, like, not stepping outside the box, even though, I like, my essence is outside of the box. But mm-hmm. I would keep myself in because I cared what people thought. And then one day I just, I just stopped caring. Like, I really think my husband had a lot to do with it because he gives no – about uh, what anybody thinks by god today before we get to to the because <laughs> listen listen hello there we we good desi we good oh my goodness we are in the building welcome to just as the podcast where we create a safe space for influencers to decompress have fun and guess what just as it's your girl Jessica Smith, and I'm super excited today, baby. I'm a little nervous. Like, <laughs> I'm probably just as nervous as I was when I interviewed Tab. No. Miss Ta- Auntie Tab. I'm just as nervous, y'all. Desiree, first of all, we got to acknowledge the woman of God. Desiree. Hey, y'all. Desiree. Hey. Desiree, Desiree, hey. Desiree, Desiree, Desiree. Say hey to the people. Hello. Can't see you again. Yet again, another week. Can't see you. But she she back in there in the building. She tried not to have a mic today, but, you know, we went ahead and cut, nip that in the bud. Y'all know y'all like hearing Desiree voice. But, y'all, another voice that we have on the platform today, just as the podcast. Woo! Woman of God, first of all, first and foremost, the GOAT in this model industry. I'm going to just say hands down. <laughs> Birmingham's finest, wife, mother of four beautiful children. I mean, she got the game on lock right now. Like, this is none other than the Kayla Inman. Yes. Y'all might know her as Kayla the model maker. Everybody, that's that's what everybody calls her. She's going to change her name to Kayla the model I maker. Might. <laughs> Welcome to the platform, sis. I'm super excited to have you. I'm happy to be here. Oh my gosh. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Don't do that. Because you're oh, already oily. We have tissue. We do. So I am a crybaby. I am too. So You know, yesterday I was thinking I owe my church like probably a pallet of tissue boxes. Because you be I'm on for the real. Floor. I'm gonna do it. Like I'm gonna just roll up to because I I the budget is broken because of me. Like I, it's me. <laughs> like, I, but you know what? Cry. You're a sower, so I think you paying for them. Pic- them, them I <laughs> probably contributed to the <laughs> tissue. I did. I did. <laughs> oh my gosh! Like, I am super excited to have you. Like, I am shaking right now because, like, oh. you are so amazing. And I, before we get into it, like, I personally want to say thank you because. <laughs> there you go and reaches I'm for the tissue, tissue here ready. we go Kayla, no like you don't even know i've been following you a minimum of i know a minimum of four years wow and i met you before you it was like the transition to mm-hmm. the blow up like people were starting to figure out who you were in mm-hmm. the city the city to be birmingham alabama and like i was like this this lady here <laughs> She she got faith on crack. Like, no, like, it's crack. Like, like it is on drugs. My faith is on drugs for sure. Yeah. And I was like so amazed um at your story mm-hmm. and just at how you was just as people would say grinding, but my new word for it is faith in it out. And yeah. it's just like you couldn't be told no. Like mm-hmm. the when I met you on social media, like as far as me watching you, because you didn't right. know who I was. <laughs> But when I met you and I saw you, all I could see was your faith. Wow. Like, literally, all I could see was your faith. And you really inspired me to even test the waters on something that I never thought I would be doing. Like, just watching your story, watching how you just really defeated all eyes. You, like, had children. Yeah. So, it gave me no, it gave me a a position of, you don't have any excuses. Facts. You have no excuses. The girl, like, literally grinded her way from zero dollars to... Baby. You you're a whole millionaire, <laughs> a whole millionaire in these streets. How you feeling, Kayla? Like how you doing, baby? I 
am doing pretty well. I'm super busy, and um, I've been telling God, like, I know that this is what I asked for, and I'm not complaining, but it's been, like, I've been traveling. I've been on so many planes, I can't even count. I got off, I had a layover in um, Orlando, but when I got off the plane, I legitimately, I'm not even kidding, couldn't tell you where I was or why for about 10 minutes. Oh, I'm, wow. I'm like, I don't know what airport this is. They're all starting to look alike. I think this is a late. I'm like, where, where am I and why? I li- I had to figure it out. I've been I've been flying that much and I've been that busy, but I'm super grateful and I can never complain because I, this is what I asked for. This is what you asked for, yeah. and baby, you you're living in it, and yeah. it seems like from outside looking in that you're living well. Mm-hmm. Like we we gonna we gonna get into this stuff. <laughs> I'm trying to ease it before we start the tears. I really feel like I'm gonna end up crying too oh, because sure. like inspiration should yeah. be your middle name. Kayla Inspiration, the model maker, or yeah. maybe the last name, Kayla, the model maker, Inspiration. I don't know. We're gonna figure. <laughs> we're gonna figure out that, aka the Inspiration. So you said that you you just got off the plane. You've been yeah. doing a lot of plane action. Like, how do you travel? Like, are you traveling by yourself? Do you have a whole team? Like, are you doing? Um, because what if people don't know that you don't consider your business like an agency yet? Do you? No. So um, I basically connect parents um and their kids to the agencies so when they are interested in their kids getting started and acting and modeling they come to me because a lot of times they don't know how to start there's a lot of scams out there there's a lot of misinformation so i'm basically like the bridge mm. yeah i love that you the plug i, I as, am the pl- pl- i call myself the plug i feel like everyone doesn't know what that means i used to have it on my instagram page but i feel like that's more of an urban thing i'm trying to reach everybody so it's like <laughs> what does she mean she's a plug but yes i am absolutely the plug do you said it properly like yeah. if anybody else watches this but most of my people probably are urban yeah yeah I'm, I'm the, plug. <laughs> the plug for my for my wonderful friends they um the plug is the bridge like she just said yeah. so the the connector the, connector. the, the yeah. person that figures out okay i know this person this person be great for this mm-hmm. and what people don't realize is the plug makes a lot of money <laughs> <laughs> she just came right out and said it i mean i'm just saying i mean i feel like people pay for the fast track because you know you have all you're always gonna have those people on the internet talking about well i could google that well, well baby google it because i was googling and getting scammed left and right so I take all the real information, package it together, and, you know, they can either do, like, my course or we'll have a package where I can do it for them. Um, but, yeah, people are willing to pay for that information to fast-track their success and not have to go through some of the stuff that I went through. Also, doesn't it make it easier for – because you, you – not only do you have your consumer base, but you have – you're trusted with different brands, right? So mm-hmm. you kind of, like, grew yeah. in that. Yeah, um, so I have – people you know that come to me to learn how and then there's a lot of word of mouth and then I do have some brands that come to me also looking for talent I'm not necessarily an agency um, but I do some casting so like uh, right now actually I'm doing a casting for Milano the brand um, because they're looking for kids you know other people come to me and say like I know that you are in the business and you you have talent so who do you have for this project it's not the main thing that I do but um, it's something that I've gotten into so I was I was rewinding your story a little bit and I was like, man, how did how do you even think of starting a business to being a connector like this? Can you can you share that with the people that don't know? Yeah, for sure. I'm trying to figure out how far back I'll go, but I always wanted to act and model. Like it was my dream. I feel like I was probably posing for my ultrasound picture. Like if you go back, I'm so tickled. The fetus, not the probably, ultrasound. Like, not, not as an egg. I, I probably was posing as an egg because I would be in the mirror, like acting out whole scenes, and nobody really knew. Um, I literally be acting out whole scenes in the mirror. I would have like these whole scenarios. I like if you look at any pictures of me and my siblings as kids, I was doing the absolute most. Like everyone else was standing there smiling, and I'd be like this. Um, <laughs> wait, so, wait, what yeah, you do? Like, can- I, we're gonna have to like, can you splice it in? I'm gonna send you a picture. <laughs> I'm doing this, and no one else is. So you know, I would sometimes talk about the fact that I want to act and model, but I just didn't really have a whole lot of support in my house like my mom would be like well I really just don't know how to do that um you know so when I got out on my own and I got married I started trying to figure it out myself I was like I'm gonna I can open a magazine and see that there's people in a magazine I can look at a billboard and see that there's people on billboards I can turn on my tv and there's people there and they got there somehow that's just always the way that I thought so if they got there somehow then I can get there somehow 
Um, so I would do all those hotel auditions where you hear people saying, like, you know, does your kid want to be an actor or model? Come on down to the Sheridan. And yeah. I get to the Sheridan, and they want a million dollars. Um, so I got, you know, I got got a lot. And I figured out by trial and error what the real way was to get started. And, and then in 2018, my oldest daughter was in the movie Black Panther. And, you know, it's funny because she was an extra. She wasn't in a speaking role. She was featured where she was, like, in the scene with Black Panther. She was the one shoveling dirt over him. So it was really cool. But, like, in Atlanta, two hours away, nobody would have cared. Matter of fact, I was trying to keep this information from them because in Birmingham, like, the city went crazy. Like, she met the mayor. He gave her this letter, presented her with the letter. Whoa. Like, we were on every single news station, WBRC, WVTM. They were interview- They were calling her school for interviews. She was in the newspaper. And I'm like, y'all, like, this is not that deep. But it was that deep because Birmingham didn't know how to do it. Yeah. And I said to myself, wow, like, we're getting all this attention, and I am dead broke. We were living in a house that was smaller than this room that we're sitting in. Um, we had four kids at the time. You know, they were eating oatmeal for almost breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And nobody wow. knew this because we had all this attention on us. And they're thinking, Black Pan, oh, you got paid a million dollars. No, ma'am. <laughs> it was like 300 We barely had gas to get to the news station, so I wanted to interview us. And I'm like, okay, I have all this attention. What can I do to maximize it? Why is this so deep to them? It's because they had the lack of knowledge. So I said, I can start teaching them. And honestly, it was an idea that I had years previous because I had done a couple of things in the industry and people had asked me what to do. But I was scared because I felt like people would say, well, why is she teaching that? She doesn't know enough. I've done such and such because I had actors and models on my page that had been yeah. in big magazines and had done this and that. And I hadn't really done as much as they had done, but I knew I had something to give. Yeah. I knew that these people were tripping that she was in Black Panther because they didn't know how to do it. And I did. So I let fear hold me back for years. I probably had that idea in 2014. As a matter of fact, I had a, a memory pop up where I had been like testing the waters. And I was like, would y'all want to know how to get started? With the workshops, the right? But I never did it. I, I had that idea back in 2014. And that came up as a memory. I never did it. So in 2018, when all this buzz was going on, I had seen this video. I don't know if y'all have ever seen it, but everybody has to watch it in life. It's by Steve Harvey. Okay. And he's talking to his audience after a filming. And he's talking about jumping. If you type in Steve Harvey jump, have you seen that before? Yes, I've seen it. Changed my life. I was like, I got goosebumps. I'm like, like, what am I waiting for? What is, what, what's wrong with someone talking about me? <laughs> like, even if they do, like, is it going to change something in my life? Is it going to turn my lights off or on? Like, it's not going to do anything. Yeah. So I'm like, they can talk if they want to, but I'm going to, I'm just going to jump. I'm going to, I'm going to post this and just see if anybody signs up. I was sitting on my living room floor in a tiny house. My husband was working nights, so he was in the back sleeping because he was getting ready to go to work. And I stayed up that night, sitting on the floor, had my phone in my hand. I was like, I'm just going to do it. I'm just going to jump. So I went on Instagram. You know how you can write on your stories and like yeah. save it to your camera roll? It was a very ghetto ad. It was a picture of my daughter in Black Panther. And it was like, I can teach you how to act and model for $35. I saved it, posted it on Facebook. It was like 8 o'clock that night. To my surprise, two people signed up almost within an hour. And for me, like, people don't understand. Like, it was $35, yes, but that $70 changed my life. I wouldn't be sitting here if it, if it wasn't for that $70 because it told me that something I had just been thinking about, if I executed it, it could become something. Like, that was revolutionary for me. Like, it literally changed everything for me. Just that night, I was like, wait a minute. So I thought about it, but if I do it, it can be, and, and it came from my brain. Do you understand what I'm saying? No, like, you, it, all the, listen, Desiree, Desiree, the woman God listen, can't run by listen, that. No, 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 no. <laughs> run that bike. Run that. She said, because she thought about she it. She thought about it. She could do it. That was a, the $70 miracle. Yeah. Girl. It, it still gives me chills to this day because when I tell you I'm, you know, we'll get into that. Money does not change everything. And, you know, there's still life issues. But I'm living a life that I built because I had the faith to, to step out. If I hadn't done it that night, if I had not made that post that night, I wouldn't be sitting here. I wouldn't have driven up in a $100,000 car. I wouldn't have another $100,000 car sitting in my driveway. 
My kids wouldn't be going to the school system they're going to. We wouldn't be living in the house that we're living in. Like all of that started because I had the courage that one night, that one minute to say, I'm going to go ahead and post this. And it wasn't that it, it blew up quickly. It, it wasn't that it had to become what it was going to become that night. It yeah. was that God was allowing me to see that this can be something that is possible, that this can work, that this is possible, that the door was open. Literally, like I had the thought and I, I, I acted on it and then boom. So from there, um, I did my first two meetings. <laughs> I remember my husband got up for work and I was like, I, um, cause I'm, I was always doing something like yeah. it was, I was, I've, I've never been one to just like, I'm going to find a way to make one. So I told him, I said, um, I started this thing and we made $70. And he was like, you made $70 because you got to remember he was working night shift at the airport. He was making $10 an hour. Mm. So for him to get up, go to work at night, out of the house, barely had gas, driving a broke down car, it's cold, nighttime. He was going to make about 70 bucks after taxes. Wow. wow. For a seven hour, for an eight hour shift, he's going to make about 70 bucks. No, hold up. You putting too much perspective on this. <laughs> like, I, I hope y'all hear her and, and seeing her right now because- I'm trying to because we I need them to catch some of this juice that you give it like she said I told my husband that I made $70 in probably what your class probably like an hour not yeah, even two I hours I hadn't even done the, the little meeting yet but yeah I made $70 that night just Wait, by selling she hadn't done that yet no because I was she meeting them in person back then for $35 yeah. they they get an in-person meeting and he asked me, he's like, well, how are you going to do that? And I was like, I don't know. I guess I'll just meet him at the library. And he just looked at me. He was like, okay. Because for us, that was money. Like, that was a lot of money for us. We were going straight to the grocery store with 70 bucks. So right. he's like, okay. And he went to work that night. And, you know, the next day I met the two people at the library, at the Homewood Library. And I had, you know, written down everything I knew. And I fumbled through it. Like, hey, follow this page. Do this, do that. And within a week, maybe, um, one of my first clients, her name is Hannah, her son booked for Oshkosh Bagash off of the information that I gave her. When I tell y'all, I was running through the house screaming, and he's like, what the heck is y'all with you? I'm like, it worked, it worked. It's not that I didn't believe the information was good. It was just that, like, oh, God, like, I made the money, I taught someone, and it produced results for them. Like, from then, it was over with. Because God, like, literally, you, you faked it out so much that God was able to prove your identity to you mm -hmm. like that's literally what i'm hearing like yeah. what and the reason why i can feel you on there because it literally just happened to me like yep. yeah. with the whole tabitha brown situation like i was like uh i didn't even have a word for for what i was doing right and so you don't know you don't really understand no, it until you're all. in that space where no. you got to take a leap of faith yep like so so even now like it's still expanding and expanding and expanding and it's like it all, you mean to tell me it all started from me have, being brave for five minutes to make a post? Girl! <laughs> like, this is, this is where we get. Like, I'm working with Nehemiah Davis because I was this, this brave. I, Tasha Cobbs is a client because I made a post. Like, how, what? Like, you texted these folks for real. Like, literally, every time she texts me, I, at Woman Evolve, yes. as a matter of fact, she literally texts me from backstage sending me pictures of her son. And she had sang the night before. So I was like, oh, my gosh, are, I saw you last night. Like, are you still here? And she's like, yeah, I'm backstage. I'm about to come out and sing. What? And you're thinking of me and texting me? <laughs> like, my mind is blown. Like, pe like, faith will put you in rooms that people can't. Like, literally, your, your faith will outdo, outdo anything that you can think or see. Like, that's why... That's, I don't, and I, I love your story because literally, I, I, I want to stress this point because she, if you follow her, then you know that she's unashamed about telling her story. Like, let's, let me let me rewind it because yeah. people in your situation, mm -hmm. right? It took a lot of faith because you couldn't see beyond what you had, right? Right. You said this room is bigger than your whole your whole living situation. Yeah. Before you blew blew all the way up, had right. the money, had the Two th over six figure cars, like yeah, baby. The fact is, I'm in the room. I receive it. <laughs> listen. I receive. You I receive, receive all, Listen, <laughs> child, listen. And so, how quickly did you have to adjust 
every make everything else adjust to your mindset. Like you got a husband that was just like, okay, like mm-hmm. what did did you have to see like teach him the level of faith that you had, or did he, he no, already? No, we it? have always been crazy together. I will say that. <laughs> like crazy first of all, that was a great time to mention my apostle, my pastor, my spiritual father, Stephen Allen Davis, because none of this would be possible without him either. Um and the being under his leadership just taught us a type of crazy faith that most people don't have. Like People, he, he, my I call him dad. He has a quote that says, they can call you crazy, but they have to call you blessed. And when we That's were so in good. our brokest of broke days, I'm talking about like ponytail fell off during the church service, no edge control, oh, dollar flip flops from Old Navy. Like I used to be in service looking tore back. Wait. And they used to be talking about us. Like the I could tell that like, people were, listen, it <laughs> fell off and I went in the bathroom and put it up on the sink because maybe that's not important right now. Like I'm going to praise God. my God. Listen, come on. Um, but people thought we were crazy because we would be in the front of the church, like jumping and like we were, we were experiencing such an inward transformation that we didn't care what we looked like on the outside because we knew what was happening on the inside. Mm. And, and I give this illustration because this is the only thing I can liken it to. When Jesus was on the cross, first of all, it couldn't have been me. I'm, <laughs> listen, said, first of all, let me make maybe first if I was point. Jesus, none of y'all would be here. <laughs> I'm about to come off this cross and show y'all that I am Jesus, right? That's what Nucky we would book. do. But like we were being crucified, but we couldn't we couldn't force our way to the to the end of the story where we're like, see, like we're not crazy. We couldn't do that. So when we're talking about tithing out of his because back then only he was working, we were used to tithe out of his gross, not his net. He was being garnished. Sometimes we would literally end up with like forty seven dollars after his garnishment, after we tithe. Like we just believed that it was that important and we were gonna do it until it worked. Like it was gonna work, it was gonna work. So, like, tithing, they thought we were crazy. Um, when we would get cars repossessed, we'd pull up to church in a cab. Like, we would spend $30 to get to church because it was that important. It was what was feeding us. And I'll never forget, I won't say, I've said in other interviews, but, like, a family member uh, was like, <laughs> how did y'all get to church? You don't have a car. And I was like, we took a cab. And she was like, you took a cab to church? Like, it was just the most ridiculous idea ever. So they thought we were crazy, um, but we just had that kind of faith to believe like we'd be working mediocre jobs and telling the people that we we're going to be millionaires. And sometimes when I could, I would dress up for work. Like yeah. I was working at a place that you didn't have to dress up. I'd have like fishnet stockings on a skirt heels and they'd be like, what are you wearing that for? And I would say I'm dressing for where I'm going. And like we just had all these things that we would say and do and people thought we were absolutely nutty until now. Now they're either like, we always knew, you know, you got them, Girl. or they're silent. And and the silent ones almost bother me more. Somebody told me, I posted that once, and they're like, you shouldn't let that bother you. I'm like, I'm human. And where's all the noise now? Because y'all were making fun of us for tithing, telling us we we're stupid, telling us you need to get on welfare. And I'm like, oh, I can't because, like, I have a working husband. Well, you can just tell them you don't know where your husband is. I'm like, no, that's not right. I'm not doing that. Well, what? Like, they would just make fun of us so bad and talk about us. They're like, you're dead broke. Like, your children, why won't you do this? Why won't you do that? I'm like, because I believe that what I'm doing one day is going to work. And now you either have the ones that are saying, I always knew in my comments, and I want to be like, you knew what? <laughs> right. Or the ones that just completely ignore it. I went and got a lime green card just, you know. It's a little bit of trauma in there, you know. I got a lime green card just so people could be like, oh, Caleb, <laughs> they still don't acknowledge it because they can't. They're convicted. Very convicted. Yeah. Very convicted. As we were talking about people, um, you know, the naysayers or the no-sayers, yeah. okay? Um, what about the people that have supported you? Have yeah. you been able to transition with anybody? Because I know I'm learning that as you elevate, baby, they, they fall off like, yeah cockroach like mm. bad. Yeah, absolutely so yeah there's there's several people like our pastor you'll hear me talk about him a million times because he he's just like the most amazing person that we've ever met like he supported us from the very beginning it didn't matter if we came in there looking broke down busted disgusted he's always <laughs> treated us the same and I'm so grateful now that we're able to say like look like we took what you taught us and we prospered with it like we were thriving from it so he literally has to tell us all the time to stop buying him gifts because <laughs> like every time I go out of town, like birthdays, Christmas, like they're getting whatever they want. I have this joke where I'm like, one day I'm going to buy y'all a real giraffe and it's going to be like a designer giraffe, like a Louis Vuitton <laughs> giraffe, which is weird of me. But anyway, 
Um, I absolutely love them. So we've gotten them all kinds of stuff. And, you know, obviously they transition with us because they never want anything from us. They just want to see us prosper. My grandfather is one of those that super, has always been super supportive. He is my person. Like, he's my person. We have the same birthday. And he's Aww. 87 years old. And um, I absolutely love him. Um, <laughs> my mother-in-law has always been super, super supportive. So, I mean, we did have those people that supported us then and now. Um, but there, yeah, there's people that fell off <laughs> and, and it was the ones that felt convicted. I would guess that they were, you know, saying what wouldn't happen or couldn't happen or that we were dumb for doing this and that. And I was like, they're silent. And sometimes they silent because in secret, they were talking real loud. Mm. They would say crazy stuff to us. So I know they were talking behind our backs. Really? Oh, absolutely. Wow. Yeah. And you, you, I can only imagine like how you had to break through that mm. negativity yeah. and how painful that was Extremely. because it's not it's not just the world looking at you your children were watching mm-hmm. you so how like how did you motivate them yeah while y'all were in the process of transition and what what impact are you seeing in their lives like now like as they're developing yeah they, that's a whole different story. that's an interesting question so my kids always say that they did not know we were broke they will tell you right now like mommy we didn't know so my older two kids, well, <laughs> my oldest daughter, she is super, like, humble and grateful because she remembers when we couldn't do what we're doing now, but she didn't necessarily know that it was because we didn't have money. Mm. Um, and then the difference between her and my youngest son, Judah, that baby has more money than me. <laughs> <laughs> that baby is rich. Do you know what he said to me the other day? I said... He, he asked for something. I was like, no, mommy doesn't want to spend money on that right now. And he said, mom, you're Kayla the model maker. He's six. you Kayla the model maker. I said, oh. <laughs> I said, this is what has happened. Yo, C just reminded you of who you were. Baby, he, we have a nanny. She picks him up, takes him to Starbucks, takes him out to eat. Like, this is the norm for him. And honestly, it's become a problem. Like, right before <laughs> I came here, literally, we were just out at um, eating. Because, you know, I've been out of town, so I took them out to eat. He had a complete meltdown because my oldest son asked if he could get a burrito off the adult menu instead of the kid menu because it's bigger. And he's 12 and he's eating up the house. So we told him yes. And then Judah asked if he could do the same. And we're like, no, buddy, you don't need that, an adult one. You're a kid. He cut up. And what we realized was he is not being told no. Like, we're so busy. We just give him what he wants. Like, he has a nanny that he can get whatever he wants from. The Joker's not being told no. And, like... It's hard because you are grateful for where you are and for what you have and for what you're able to provide to them. But at the same time, you have to make sure that there's a way to keep them grateful and humble. Like my oldest, she remembers struggle. She didn't remember it as struggle, but she remembers when we didn't have as much. Yeah. So she's the one that'll be like, oh, mommy, you don't have to give me like I I took them to Target. My two, I have two girls and two boys. I took Mm -hmm. the two girls to Target and I was like, "Um, you know what? Y'all can have $40 to spend on whatever you want. And she was so excited. She was like, Mommy, you don't have to do 40. You can do. You can just do 20. You don't have to do 40. This is wow. my 14-year-old. She's like, just do 20. You don't have to give us $40 each. The youngest daughter, by contrast, I'd already told her she could get a scarf. I'd already told her she could get a scarf. And she's like, well, does the scarf come out of my 40? Oh, yeah. and I said. But I this is the one with the bracelets, right? The one. No, no, no. That's, that's my oldest. But, okay. you know. But I said, <laughs> I said yeah, it's going to come out of your 40. This little girl starts crying. But mom, that's not fair because you had already said that I could get the because she, not she's of the younger two. The younger two are little rich babies. And then the older two are a little bit more grateful. I'm like, you are crying because I want the scarf to come out of the 40. And then her sister's like, no, don't give me 40, give me 20. So it's just really interesting to see the differences in them. And you know, it's a it's a work in progress to try to keep them in a place where they understand the life that they live is not normal. Yeah. That they are privileged. And that, you know, everyone does not live this way. It's it's hard. It's a hard thing because I had poverty trauma from mm. what we went through. So the second we could, I'm like, what do you mean the little girl at school has golden goose? You want some golden goose, baby? Let's go get them. We can get those too. And then you get into like living in a predominantly white area and all that comes along with that as well. Like you want them to have what the kids at school have. And that's why she was looking, my daughter, <laughs> she was looking at the Cartier bracelets because the little girl at school had one. Cartier. And I, yeah, I'm mm. like, you, what? Like, those and for those that don't know what that was, for those that don't know what that is, basically it was a four thousand dollar bracelet mm-hmm. 
And I, the reason why I, like, I saw it on your social media, yeah. and I, I was like, what kind of, I was like, what is this? <laughs> like, yeah. how does she, I don't, I'm 32. I don't know nothing about, and what is it called, a, card, a cardiologist brace? Right. <laughs> I'm so and apparently you have to, like, take them on and off with a tool or something. I don't know. But that's what the little girls at her school are wearing. And even though she wants some of the stuff, like, she's she's not going to necessarily act. Like, she's super, super grateful, yeah. like, for whatever she gets. Now, the little girl's expensive. Like, you know, she wears Lululemon and runs around Stanley Cup and all that. But she is so grateful that it makes me want to give her more. Now, the mother, <laughs> I love y'all babies. Mommy loves y'all. <laughs> uh, they just, they're growing up privileged. They're they're riding around in a hundred thousand dollar car. Like that's their norm now. When I have pictures of them riding riding around in a five hundred dollar van that the tire flew off of and went across the street to say hi, um, you know, like just a couple years ago. In twenty twenty, we had no car. Let's 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 preference that. Twenty twenty, the beginning of twenty twenty, we were walking to save a lot with the backpack on. How crazy with is that? With four kids? You had four kids? We didn't walk the kids now. He, he Okay, let me let me rephrase that. <laughs> My husband walked with a backpack to say, well, I was walking. <laughs> <laughs> let me, not Thank me, you, man of God. Let me not be lying. Like that. I, didn't, I didn't walk. Um, I did used to walk to McDonald's for Wi-Fi to, mm-hmm. you know, to do stuff with the business. But yeah, um, just, you know, it's 2024. So four years ago, we were not living this life. And it happened so quickly. I'm, I'm, I think I gotta take a deep breath. Everybody <laughs> just one, two, three, take. Because you, in the, I don't even know how long we've been going so far. You, you really dropped a lot of gems that I don't even think you realize. And so I want to hit something that we talked about a little bit earlier. You said that you and your husband mm-hmm. kept going back to your church mm-hmm. and kept tithing and was consistent at that because you understood and saw the inward work. Mm-hmm. And so when we think about that, especially as um, um, believers, entrepreneurs, um, what does that even look like? Because you went from zero to mm-hmm. a million. Yeah. Like you just went, what does that gap of healing looks mm. like for somebody? That's a good question. Um, so the journey was a tough one because like I said earlier, knowing that you know that you know that you know that you are being transformed on the inside, yeah. but other people can't see it. You have to go through ridicule. Like, can you imagine being Jesus and they're spitting on you? Talking about, well, come down then. And you know that you can come down if you wanted to? Come on. I, I, I don't admit, I got some trauma. So I like to prove people wrong. Like, I'm still in that place where I'm like, I, I will show you. You want me to come down? I'm coming down. <laughs> but, but he didn't do that. Like, that's the only thing I can liken it to, where people are spitting at you and talking about you, and they truly believe that you can't do anything about it. Like, n- nothing's changing with you. You ain't got more than I have. We had somebody tell, tell us that. Like, God ain't doing no more for you than he's doing for me. A very close family member. My, you know what? It's my story to tell. My mama. She said it. She did. I'm, she hold said, up. I'm proud of you for that. I, it, that was a no it, it's hard it's That's hard rage. and she may yeah. see this and i love you <laughs> but you said it we love you mama but this is your truth god is not doing anything more for you than he's doing for me but i knew that he was i knew that on the inside everything was changing and it was only a matter of time before it showed up on the inside but do you know what statements like that do when it's like oh i just want to show you but i can't i could not come off of the cross i could not i could not come off of the cross i had to stay there until my process was complete. So that's why I always liken it to Jesus being on the cross. Because they're like, come down from there. And you spit on me? Baby, I'm going to take these nails out. And I'm jumping down. But I couldn't do it. So that was the most difficult part of the process was, I got to stay here. I got to deal with this, even though I know that everything on the inside of me is changing. And one day, y'all are going to see. And when the one day came, silence. That's the hardest part. Kayla. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I swear you're stirring me right now. Man, like, listen, I done already had to go get my scriptures because um what I what I keep hearing is um what faith what I keep hearing is and seeing is when you take the leap of faith, mm-hmm. right? So you said it started with um an idea, a thought, you mm-hmm. saw something, it's like, man, I could do that. The fear is but um, 
I don't know, or I haven't been doing this as long as X, Y, and Z, mm-hmm. right? But the courage is to do it um, even when the fear is there. Mm-hmm. So because you took the faith leap to do something that you couldn't see, like you just talked about how you're living, your living situation, yeah. um, but you took the faith, and now because you allowed yourself not to come down off the cross, you you went through the process. Now God was able to show you what was on the other side yeah. of, that, of that faith. Which has already been there. It was already there. That part, Kayla. That's the crazy part. Kayla, bef- I'm going to have to pause you for one second because <laughs> you're talking. I, I don't want to miss certain things. <laughs> okay, there's two things. There's two things. Oh, my gosh. So I, as you were talking, literally I heard Holy Spirit say, the reason why she can be the bridge is because she leaned on the bridge. Mm. Literally every example that you've given me Mm -hmm. about faith, you leaned on Jesus. And that's what, I mean, for those that don't really know God, because at the end of the day, we are the light and salt of the earth and baby, you shining and we can taste you from afar. Man, listen. Okay. Like literally you keep bringing Jesus up, bringing Jesus up, but it's like literally you, (laughs) I, I, I don't know. And don't people, all your holy, righteous people that that tie tribute just talking about, I'm gonna leave y'all to pipe down for a second when I make the statement. It's almost that you embody Jesus so much that yeah. it's like you you are him. Like that's what we're supposed yeah. to do. I know we yeah. have flaws and everything, but the fact that your foundation is so intact, girl, yeah. that when I tell you that's so freeing <laughs> and to be in the industry that you're in, people look down on entertainment so much mm-hmm. and they say bad things. But the fact that I see you as a woman of God first, like I literally, that's why I started following you. Yeah. I was like, oh, she's a woman of God. Like her faith too big for me not to follow. <laughs> so that's why I start following you. And so I just want to say thank you, man. Like literally you are the bridge because you love the bridge so much. Yeah. You can only be what you respect and honor. Ooh, I love that. Like you can only do, you can only do, watch this. You can only be who you study too. People, let me tell you something. What is it? Pastor Stephen, right? Bishop Stephen. Bishop Davis. Stephen. Yeah. Don't let me, listen, Bishop. <laughs> I don't want to get it wrong, Bishop. <laughs> I honor him just because you honor him. As you should. Listen, let me tell baby. you, let me tell you something. And and the thing I have respect, everybody that got a title ain't oily yeah. or anointed. Let me just say that because some of y'all get your own self titles. But because I've seen you, you, you give him, you reference him so much. Mm-hmm. I'm like, okay, he didn't done something. You oh, know, he's he speaking some type of good word. Girl. For her, you can, you don't pour like that. No, back like that. If when I tell you that, like, the quickest way to get cut off is to say anything sideways about him, his wife, his daughters, or his dog. <laughs> Talk about sugar bear. The dog. Not, not, <laughs> uh, not sugar bear. Come on. Talk about sugar bear. Like I don't, I don't play that. I don't play that with any because the Bible says, "Touch not mine anointed and do my prophet no harm." If I see anyone on my timeline talking about any man or woman of God, I block them. Like I got so many people blocked on other people's behalf. Like I see people talking about PMJ blocked. Like I don't, I don't even want to be connected to that because you're right. bringing a because that's yourself. a danger zone. But especially not my man of God because yeah. I would not be who I am, what I am, if it were not for God sending him to us, because he's just, you, you really got to interview him. He's different I would from anyone to. I've ever met. Like Bishop. With the church, like I just, I remember when I first came, um, it was in 2008. We've been under his leadership for 15 years now. Um, but the first, I came by myself the first night, it was around Valentine's day. And I remember the lo- the slogan for the church was living a religious free lifestyle. Mm. And when I tell you that thing confused me, I was like, what does that mean? I'm coming to church to become more religious. Like, I want to be religious. That's what we're here for, right? I was so confused that I came back. And what I learned was that there's a difference between religion and relationship. And religion is just a bunch of rules and regulations. And my church doesn't do any of that. Like, and, and honestly, I wasn't I wasn't churched, as they say. Like, mm. I went to Catholic church, which was a whole other thing. But I didn't know about, like, he jokes about, you know, the remembrance table that's not in the bible or you know the fish fries and all these things that they do <laughs> <laughs> he's like we have no fish fry up at a time um but like i i just didn't grow up like that so i didn't know about all the churchisms and the church hurt and all that kind of stuff i just knew that he was radical and that i had radical faith and and you know it, it everything that he poured out we were catching and implementing it didn't matter what he said if he said god said go out here knock on the table three times and and say you want 
I don't know. Like, what it, it didn't matter what it was. Like, we were going to do it because we had the faith to believe. Yeah. And while a lot of other people were not implementing what they were learning, like, you can run and jump around the church all you want. But if you're not going home and implementing, you have a notebook full of notes. Listen. If you're not implementing, it's not going to work for you. And we were going home and implementing. And while we were looking broke on the outside and while we were pulling up in cabs, we all got the same information and we all went home. And if y'all didn't implement it, you can't be mad at us. They look at us like we're aliens now. Like, we're, like, just, like, what? Like, how did y'all, the same thing. We were sitting under the same word. <laughs> the same, the same anointing. The yeah. same thing. And I know, and I don't mean it's, like, shady, but I can feel you from where, you, where you're coming mm-hmm. from. Because there was a point in time, and I'm still growing, yeah. right? I haven't even hit my pinnacle point yet. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And people, like, I've gotten the talk of a you. You you running up after this leader, you doing this on this leader. And I'm just like, what y'all don't know is what you were talking about, that inner work. I know how broken I was, mm-hmm. and I know how much healing I still need. Facts. Why wouldn't I stay under the same oil that got me to the place don't where I'm... Don't ever listen to those people. Listen. I'm telling you, if you don't do anything else, do not listen to those people. I don't care what they say. They, they <laughs> There's so much that Jackie we'll, family members have said to me, but there there's an individual... Um, <laughs> that we gonna get her. We, this we know. There was an individual <laughs> girl, because we all know who it is now. But um, I had made a post on Facebook, and you know, like in I don't know if all churches do it, but in like black churches, the they call it the first family, like the, the mm-hmm. pastor, the wife, you know. So I was like, they they drive Cadillacs, and anytime I'm like out, I'm like, oh, is that them? Like waving, because I love to see them out. Like I love them; they're my parents. So I made a post that was like, does anybody else break their necks um, when they see black Cadillacs to see if it's a member of the first family? It's just a joke for the church. Somebody was saying um, that they're like, I'm trying, I'm trying so hard to be diplomatic. <laughs> Somebody posted something like, um, oh, they, you act like uh, the president was in town. They're like, I was trying to see if you were talking about a member of the, the president's family. Like, y'all act like he's a celebrity or something. Y'all act he, like he's a rapper. And I thought that was so profound that they said that, right? She said, you act like he's a rapper or something, like a celebrity. I'm like, so we're saying that it's okay and normal to give that kind of honor and respect to a celebrity because they're rapping about whatever. But I can't do that for a man of God that's changed my life. Like, do you like it's so deep. Sometimes you just have to listen to what people are saying. You said you act like he's a celebrity or something. So that's what. Like, what is a celebrity? Yeah. What does that even mean? Yeah. It's somebody that's popular. He's popular. Like, what What are you saying? Why is that not okay? It's somebody that's done something for me, but you can do it to Jeezy, and that's normal because Jeezy doesn't know you and never will. Like, because I, you'll get clout, enough clout for a picture. Say, well, I, I went to the Jeezy concert. I went to the orchestra. But when I post Ross. a picture of me and my man of God, you're mad. You why is mad. that? Why does that make sense? It just doesn't. Every, it's backwards. And but that's but if why he they're did, broke. I'm sorry. For their, no, you're good. <laughs> if he did for their life, like he's done for your, but the end. I'm so glad she said this implementation. Yeah. What makes me di- like we get the same thing. Mm-hmm. We could be in a. I bet it's somebody in the church that, in the same church mm-hmm. that's been there the same amount of time and longer. And they trying to figure out no how you. And I'm like, girl, it. I sat right next to you for all 15 years. I just went out and did it, and it hurt. Did it? Was it easy? No. It hurt like hell. Do you oh know God. what it's like to tithe out of somebody's gross when they're already getting garnished? Like. It didn't make sense. We did things that didn't look like it made sense. It didn't. To the natural mind, it doesn't make sense. But we did the things because we just knew that it was going to work somehow. Like, we felt it on the inside. And I'll say this. um, My apostle also, he preached a message one time about checkpoints. And Mm -hmm. checkpoints are really important for us on this journey. A checkpoint is basically a moment in time where you know that you're on the right path. Like something happens, you're like, okay, for sure that was God. Like, I don't know, you know, what's been going on, but I know that that was God, so I'm going to keep going. Yeah. And we had several of those instances where it's like, okay, I, I think we're on the right path. One of those, this is a crazy story. So I we, like, <laughs> we probably lived over the past, we've been married 15 years. We've probably lived in like 30 different places. We'd get kicked out, like, you know, whatever. So one of these times, we had no place to stay. We were living with his aunt, and we found a cute little townhome in Grayson Valley. Um, and, like, back then, granite countertops were the thing and the stainless steel. Like, we were so excited. We probably shouldn't even been trying to get it because we couldn't really afford it. 
But like, we were so excited. We talked to the people. We're like, we don't have the down payment now, but we'll have it this day. And there's just so, we've always had so much favor. So like, okay, we'll, you know, adjust things and you can pay it in, in two weeks and we'll hold it for you. So I just started working a night shift job at Dunkin' Donuts. And um, I've been working for like two weeks and you know, you don't get your first check right away. Right. So like we had calculated when I would get my first check and it was right around time where, you know, it was a Friday, he was getting his, I was getting mine. For, anyway, we had calculated that we would have exact amount that we needed to move into this place we're so excited they approved us even though we probably shouldn't have been approved like boom we're gonna move in on this friday we're gonna have the money i'm gonna pick up my check we'll put it with his and get the place the wednesday before the friday that we thought we're gonna get paid we're supposed to get paid yeah um church was over i was a praise dancer so we had practice that night so someone walks up to me that i don't know i'd seen her before but i'd never spoken to her and she grabs my hand, and I can tell she's put money in my hand, right? So she puts money in my hand, and she's like, she's looking at me deep in my eyes. And I was like, thank you. And she was like looking at me. I'm like, okay. And I realized why she was looking at me like that later. But I, I took the money, and I was like, oh. So I called my husband back in. He's waiting in the car. And I handed it to him. I was like, somebody just gave us this. He's like, okay. So he goes out to the car, and then he calls me right back. And he's like, Kayla. <laughs> I was like, what? He was like, this is $350. I was like, what? Because again, back then, like that was that's yeah. like that's his whole check yeah. in a week. And I'm like, what? And he's like, yeah. And I'm realizing why she's looking at me in my eyes like that. She was like, God told me to give you this. Is what she said. She yeah. said, God told me to give you this. And I'm thinking it's like twenty bucks. But now she probably it was probably a faith walk for her, yeah, right? Because she like three hundred fifty dollars. I'm, I'm giving you this. <laughs> so I'm like, what? So you know, praise dance is over. I go out to the car. We're like, what is this for? That's crazy. So this was a lesson. We actually ended up jacking it up, but it was the biggest lesson of my life. We ended, I think we ended up buying like some shoes with it, which is terrible. Cause what we should have done was ask God what it was for. Mm. If she said, God told you to give me, like told me to give you this. Oh, that's so good. We, we squandered it. Friday comes around. It's the day we're moving into our townhouse. Cause they're in a county house. Mm -hmm. Staying with still. I go up to Dunkin' Donuts. They're like, oh, since you just started, you don't get paid until the next week. Kayla. Kayla. Listen to me. Listen to me. So not only did I not get paid, but when we calculated that 350, because I want to say it was like 353 or a crazy number, was exactly what we were missing to get in that townhome. So we go back to them and we try our hand at favor again. And guess what? They're like, no, we already moved too many things around for you. We're not going to be able to do it. That's a checkpoint. Even though it didn't work out the way that it should have worked out because we made a mistake, it was almost a bigger lesson for us to always seek God on everything. Because if we had been like, okay, what is this for? He would have been like, chill out, don't spend it. And then boom, we would have been in the townhouse. We didn't get in it. And we ended up living with his aunt for some more months. But when I tell you it was the exact amount, that how many lessons does that teach you? It teaches you to make sure you seek God. It teaches you that God is sovereign. That he's all freaking knowing, <laughs> right? Because he knew ahead of time that I wasn't going to get my check and that I would need that amount of money to get in the town home. And he was looking out for us beforehand when we weren't even looking out for ourselves. That's an even better lesson to me, right? <laughs> Your face is so funny. <laughs> Hilarious, I can't Jace. tell you how many stories we have like that. Like we have so many stories of just God being so faithful and us learning who he is. Mm -hmm. Like that taught me who God is. God is a provider. He knew that we would not have the money. I'm thinking, oh, you know, I'm getting my Dunkin' Donuts check. We're going to be straight. Let's spend this money. No, ma'am. Kayla. Right. I have, I have so, we're going to have to do a part two. I have so many stories Kayla. like that. So I got questions. I, so, <laughs> I got questions so, too. So in the moment, it didn't dawn on you that, hey, maybe we can use this towards going into the, to the place. Because we thought. Okay. We knew what we had going on we thought, i'm like on friday we're getting the dunkin donuts check so we're gonna be straight right wow. I, th I thought i knew and obviously we didn't knew and got knew. wow wow so my question <laughs> <laughs> we got questions <laughs> the teacher i'm raising my hand teacher kayla kayla teacher mother molly Murphy. so this came up, and I was thinking about this. I said, "Lord, am I gonna be able to answer this question? Ask her this question with sound, sound, without sounding bad?" And you just kind of led me into this question. Okay. Practicality is one of the things that we love on this on this show. Yeah. 
practically speaking, how in the world did you go from managing zero dollars mm. or mismanaging mm. three hundred and fifty dollars mm-hmm. to now managing millions Mo- multiple. Are of we, dollars? This is the safe space. Are we being honest? Baby, yes. this is the safe space. Multiple millions. Um, I'm not doing very well. <laughs> That's real. It, you know, and I, I literally had this conversation yesterday with a friend. I was like, I don't know how I went from making the the last year I worked a nine to five. I was making I made fourteen thousand dollars for the entire year. Like, I don't know how I went from making that in a year to making that in a day. Mm. And it still seems like things are all over the place. Like I make great money. But it's kind of hard to streamline it when you're used to. I mean, like it, the way you handle one thing is the way you handle everything. <laughs> that, that's a quote I that heard, I just heard. I was like, I, heard, that I hurt. hope they heard this. So that is the truth. Like, I make a ton of money. I have a ton of expenses, and there's things that still could be tightened up. You mm-hmm. know, um, and that's something that I wish I would have handled before because you'll you'll sit there and be like, "How in the world am I making this kind of money?" And it's like. It doesn't, it doesn't feel like what you think it should feel like if you don't have things in place, like if you don't have financial systems in place. And that's something that I'm working on now, um, having a financial planner and just being like, okay, tell me what to do because obviously I'm not doing right. I'm not saying I'm struggling by any means, but, you know. The management part. Yeah, it's just we like. We talk about this all the time because she's good at that. Mm-hmm, I'm not. But listen, but this is the thing, though. I wasn't either. So I'm a um, licensed cosmetologist. Mm-hmm. So I started out on my own um, full time in 2015 um, as a full time entrepreneur. And doing hair, you know, I was working from the rooter to the tutor. So, you know, I was making I was making pretty good money. Yeah. But I was like, where is that? Facts. Where is that? And just coming from um, I came from a single parent home and I literally watched my mom get up, pretty much work sun up to sundown and still like it was like the end work meeting. Right. Mm -hmm. So that was just naturally in me to work. But I'm like, Lord, I don't know where my money going. So I actually started with a um, Disa who sent me the um, who sent me the post. Mm -hmm. She started doing my budget for me. Cause I didn't know how I didn't know how to budget, right? But I knew I was like, Lord, I know I'm making the money. I don't know where it is. Yep. Well, when I started to sit down and and track stuff, she would say, "Dad, send me this." She asked me the simplest question. She said, "What is your weekly goal?" I said, "What you mean?" <laughs> She's like, "No, like you need to have a number um, of ex- how much you need to make a week to cover your your expense on right. the on the minimum side." I was like, "I." Ain't think about that i would just go make the money and then you know and pay with the spend you know what i'm saying <laughs> you make it and you spend that's it that's yeah. it and so literally i was not tithing at the time either mm-hmm. because that's my saving grace i'm gonna be honest with listen y'all. like if it, if it wasn't for me being a tither i'd probably be broke making millions I can, I, i'd be a broke millionaire i cannot not tie now 10 percent off top like if i found a dollar on the ground god's getting 10 listen, cents come on so that's the reason i keep making money but i'm jacking things up i'm gonna be honest with you like i need you got what's her name Des? Desa. Okay. i was about Desa. to say <laughs> like Des, we 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 finna have you on the podcast because we really we really have to get the stewardship part right. Yeah. Like, we got to. Because the thing about it is we can give, 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 give. And that's God, another thing. God. I give to God, but I give to random people. I'll talk right. to somebody in the car <laughs> on Facebook. I literally oh, want okay. to still need to keep track of that. That's true. Because, for one, that's part of the testimony. That's yeah. true. Like, that's a part of the testimony for somebody else and us. Because you still, he says, I give seed to the sore. And mm-hmm. if you continue to sow, so there's more seed. Right. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, it's like. We have a responsibility, yeah. not just to ourselves, but to God. And I just cu- uh, thank you for one. Yeah, for thank being you for honest. being honest about that. That was because real hard. Folks, we act, ooh. Come on. No, I said you, this is, a, is this in disarray. But, I, I, but, but so the things that keep me going is that I, I'm making a crap ton of money. I tithe and I give a lot. Like I get, real, honestly, what I spend the most money on is food. And that's really bad. I'm a foodie. Like I will, I will Baby, spend. Baby, listen, Chick-fil-A. I realized Chick-fil-A like was getting breakfast, lunch, and dinner. out. Yeah, I, yeah, I go crazy to maybe three or four shrimp. restaurants. Oh, okay, a day. Uh-huh. yeah. How many times shrimp you have shrimp? Shrimp is a big part of the budget. Okay. I've had shrimp twice already today, okay. but that's not the point. I mean, you know, um, yeah, she shrimp. So he wasn't gonna bring that out today. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> well, good, you if know. y'all want to give Kayla something, just give her shrimp <laughs> gift cards. <laughs> shrimp <laughs> gift cards. Yes. What's your fa- What's your favorite seafood place? Automatic is really good here in Birmingham. Automatic seafood. They have automatic. It. Yep, it's called automatic. It's what like, side of town is it? I shouldn't have said it because now it's gonna be booked out. But um, <laughs> it's really, it's like a super. I love like a low lit restaurant. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Like I love the cozy vibe. Yeah. So it's like it's really nice. It's downtown. 
Okay. Yeah. Yep. Well, they appreciate that. That shout out. Well, shout Y'all out. can use this free shrimp. Just yeah. you know. Yeah. Shout us out too. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we gotta help each other out. No, like, for sure. Not for real. Like I love I love how you're we you were able to use your daughter's story. Something that highlighted in that for me was that Burm the next state over wasn't phased by the extra. No, I would have been so embarrassed if they even saw one of the news stories. I'm not even kidding. Like I would have been so embarrassed. But the city that you were in mm-hmm. You you needed to be here, and let me let me make, let me make the statement because people act like the the Birmingham don't got nobody or we don't have. Yeah. I think we got some of the best talent mm-hmm. around. Our mindset is jacked up. Yeah, and once once we get out us outside of ourselves and just actively work that faith that you were talking about, I think we'll be good. Speaking of faith, girl, let me tell you something. I watched. Um, you didn't do an interview. I watched a speech that you did mm. that blessed every ounce of me. Really? What was you that? You want to guess te- what you did? The TED talk. Oh, wow. talk. So in this in this speech, you basically the speech was entitled Tell Ye- Say Yes to Fear. Yes. Right? And it blessed me so well because for one, I love how balanced you are. Mm-hmm. Cause it's like a lot of people like show, oh, I'm the glory this and I'm the glory that, blah, blah, blah. But you don't mind showing people or even announcing the Mm-mm. ugly part. Yeah. And in that in that take, you would in that speech, you you said, "Hey, I said fear to uh, yes to fear here and here." Like you was a com- campaign manager, girl, girl. I don't know how or why. Like I literally, I'm like, you want me to do what? I didn't even know. You heard me talk about. I didn't know what an incumbent was. I thought yeah. she was calling him ignorant. Yes. I, <laughs> Like I find myself in the craziest situations because of faith. Like I have, a, have you ever seen the meme of it's the dude like he has his hands on his hips and he's looking at a closet and it has like all these cords and like all these machines and he's trying to figure it out. You gotta look it up. It's like this funny meme where it's like he's trying to figure out what to do. It's like how did he get hired? But I've actually been in that exact situation. Like I used to sign myself up for jobs that I like semi knew how to do or didn't know how to do at all. But I'd be like I could figure it out because it was in our broke days. Like I get on Craigslist. And find me an odd job, okay? Like, I have sold peanuts in the stands at NASCAR. I have literally gotten a job where I was supposed to go in there and, like, take inventory on some machines. And I was looking just like that dude. Like, I didn't know what I was doing. I have – I became a makeup artist. I had never done makeup ever in my life. Never put makeup on myself or put it on anybody else. I got a job at Clinique as a makeup artist. At Clinique at that. I learned as I went. Like, I've never been afraid to try something. Like, I'm just – I have crazy faith. I can't be told no. Like, I – like, I I call it short-circuiting. But if somebody tells me no, like, I've gotten to a place where I can either – think my way out of a no which i had to do for many years or now it sounds bougie but i can pay my way out of a no like mm. <laughs> you ain't got no seats at the table you ain't got no you know reservations okay here's here's not at all but so when people tell me no i'm like mm, th- no there's got to be a way so like i've always had those characteristics i just have crazy faith i'll sign my husband's like how you go get a job at clinique and you don't wear makeup <laughs> i'm like i just i'll figure it out <coughs> why wow, you got makeup artists not even Signing up or even saying, hey, I'll do this, I'll do that. Right. And, or they say, I love when they say this. It's, it's, it's everybody's being a makeup artist. It's cluttered. Because no, that's I have a soapbox for that. Oh, Jesus. That just, mm. <laughs> that, that just, that's just it did. Listen, Deep down. Don't ever soul. say that around me. I, listen, when, when I've had strangers say that, I'm like, well, what do you really want to be doing? Well, I really want to be, I really like want to sell lashes, but everyone's doing that. I will smack you because <laughs> listen to me. That irritates my soul because, first of all, they don't know where I came from. Like, don't ever make an excuse around me. Like, yeah. don't do it. Is there not a McDonald's right across the street from Burger King? It is. My God. What is a there? Do they both sell burgers? Mm-hmm. Are there lines wrapped around each corner? And they are. Yes. So don't ever talk about what you won't do because somebody else is doing it because you bring something unique to what you do. One of them's flame broil, right? Yep. And the other one, I don't know what they do to it because it has no flavor. But my point is, <laughs> <laughs> you bring something unique Sesame to the table. Buns. Everyone, <laughs> I, you know, you're doing a podcast. It seems like everyone's doing a podcast now. But what you bring to the table is different. Tabitha Brown chose you to talk to. 
You got Kayla the model maker on our side. No, no, no. I like, got Kayla I've said the no. model maker. I've said no to several podcasts that I didn't want to do. I just love the way you came up to me. You're like, oh my gosh, you're. I'm like, I'm on your vision board. Like, how could I not do it? Like, but we haven't told them the story. Yes. we have not told. Let's we, tell so, the story. so, um, I and I'm gonna let, I'm gonna talk, talk to the ton of her because she got to tell her reaction because <laughs> I love her reaction. So, uh, I've been following. I said this earlier. I've been following Kayla for some years now, and I've seen. I was following before the big hit happened, right? And so I went to Woman Evolve in September. Shout out to Pastor Sarah Jakes Roberts. We love you. I can't wait to do the podcast with you, whether I'm on Woman Evolve or you're on Just Ask the Podcast. <laughs> you heard it first, Either all right? Um, so I actually signed up to serve uh, for Woman Evolve, and I was on the PR team. So for some, for some reason, they had me go looking for somebody. I don't know what I was doing at the moment. But I forgot what I was doing because all I saw was her. <laughs> and she was in the front seat on the set in, in specific side. You know what? I was looking for I was looking for my line sister. I'm looking for my sister. And um to give her a hug because I hadn't seen her. And she was in the section that she was in. And I think I forgot to even look for her. And I saw the woman of God and we locked eyes and I'm like this, y'all. Like if you see me on YouTube. <laughs> Oh, like I'm like I'm trying not to scream. It's forty thousand people in this space, and I see her, somebody that I wrote on my vision list for the podcast to interview. At this point, I and when I wrote it down, I wouldn't really interview anybody. It was just me. I decided to write name, names down, and baby, I've been checking them things off, baby. And so I freeze, and I freak out. like I am literally freaking out. I don't even know. I can't even tell you what my body was doing, but. She can, and I'm, I go up to her, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. I said, can I hug you? Like, I'm, just like, I'm so right. nervous because I'm like, she is great to me. Like, she might not be a celebrity, y'all, but she, she my celebrity, okay? <laughs> She's done a lot for me, okay? And so I'm going to let you t- tell the rest of it. Yeah, so, I mean, I was, like, I don't view myself how other people view me, which is probably a good thing. I don't think we should ever um, <laughs> be grand in our own eyes like I'm not saying I I think I'm not special but like when I go out in Birmingham especially like I get stopped every single day somebody's either telling me they've done my program or like they know me from social media and it's it's still kind of strange to me because I I like I just 2020 just blew me up so I I go out places and I was at breakfast and the lady behind me was like oh my gosh I'm in your program like what like you're Caucasian and on the other side of town. Are you serious? Um, so, like, I got kind of used to it in Birmingham, but, like, I'm in Dallas, Texas, yeah, yeah. in a room full of women, like 40,000 people, and I'm sitting there, and she comes up to me, and she's like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, it's you. I'm like, surely she doesn't mean me. No, she doesn't think I'm someone else. Um, but I felt special. Like, I, I'm i not, like, Hollywood. I would never, like, I get just as excited to see y'all as you are me because it's always a reminder of, what I've built and what God has done in me. So I was super excited to see you. I gave you a hug. I was like, yeah. what's your name? She posted me on her Facebook. I sure did. I was like, oh my gosh. I thought it was just as cool as you did. Like, I don't <laughs> think I'll ever get to the point where I'm like, oh yeah, yeah, I'm Kayla. Like, oh my God, like, I'm, that's just not me. I'm, I'm just me day in, day out. Um, so yeah, I was excited. And then you told me that I was on your vision board. I was like, oh, for sure we can do this. Cause how else would we bump into each other in, in a room with all these people? So it was really cool. And I've told that story several times to other people. Really? Yeah. I, I was just telling that the other day. I was like, cause they were like, you're out of town. Like nobody's going to recognize you here. I was like, they might. Cause I was in Dallas <laughs> <laughs> and somebody came up to me in a room my full own of business. people. But you know what I love about that story? There's an extension to that story. So watch this. So even though you gave me permission Mm -hmm. to reach out to you to do the podcast, I was still scared. Are you serious? I was still scared. I was still wrapped up a little bit in fear because I was like, okay, it's the imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. Like, can I really? We all deal with that. I I still deal with that. Man, can I really interview somebody so great like her? Yeah. And then the impact that 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 would have and is going to have Mm -hmm. for my platform. Let's just be real. You know what I'm saying? That's not why I did it because I go. I'm led by Holy Spirit first right. and foremost. There's a lot of people I can reach out to, but I don't. Yeah, like you just said, right? And so I thank you and I thank God for allowing you to yeah. feel be this be a safe space for yeah. you to be interviewed. But I really didn't even respond to your 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 yes um, because I was still not wow. prepared, and so t- what people don't understand is the Tabitha Brown broke something in mm. me. 
like me saying yes and then actually doing it, mm-hmm. she looked at me and she said, I told I told her, this is so exclusive. When we got back, when we got finished and we got done backstage, right? We got backstage. I was like, the first thing I did, I said, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I messed up on this question. Like I'm in my, wow. I went directly yeah. like negative, negative, negative. And she looked at me, she said, no. She said, you made not one mistake. Wow. And I looked at her. Ooh. Mm -mm. I looked at her, Kayla. And I was so confused because sometimes I feel like I am the mistake. Yep. Yep. And so when she looked at me and said, you made not one mistake, right? Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) You made not one mistake. Yeah. That gave me so much confidence. And then being able to. Like, so many people in Birmingham didn't know who I was, mm-hmm. right? And um, still don't. Yeah. But the people that were there, mm-hmm. I'd heard nothing bad. Like, I yeah. had, I, I've heard nothing continuously good things. Yeah. And I was like, you, a meteorologist, I can't think, I think it's Tonia. She she shouted me out. I think she's WBRC or. Yeah. Yeah. She shouted me out. And that was the biggest compliment. She was like, girl, you did that interview. Y'all yeah. go follow her, Black Girl Magic. That was a big deal to me because what people don't understand is before the before the interview, I was contemplating on getting Fred Davenport mm-hmm. to mentor me. I was going to reach out to him. Scared to do it. Wow. I was going to reach out to him because I like the way, way he mm-hmm. interviews as yeah. well. He just keeps it real. You know what I'm saying? But he's yeah. still polished and poised. And the reason why I was going to do that was because, for one, he's local in Birmingham. And then uh, David Shan, he was telling us to study mm-hmm. study other interviewers. Mm. And I did that. I literally took what he said and yeah. I started implementing what he said. So, fast forward, I still ain't had no one-on-one training. I'm yeah. just going off And you of, do a great job. Thank you. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, girl, the extension to the story is that you were proud of me and you reached out to me. You was like, hey, I meant what I said. Like, if you had not done that, I don't know if I would have still had the guts. Wow. You broke something in me and said, hey, no, I committed to something to you a a minute ago. I still want us to do that. I meant it then and I even meant it more now. She said, this is what she told me. I want y'all to catch this. She said, we got to keep up the momentum. We. I'm glad you caught what I said. (laughs) I'm a girl's girl. Like, she said, we got to keep up with the momentum. Yeah. And that, I, girl, my past with women yeah. has not been good. So for somebody that don't even know me like it's that. It's we, girl. I saw that. I was so excited. I was like, oh, my gosh, that's the girl that I met in Dallas. And she, <laughs> I was telling my husband, like, girl. she got to interview with Tabitha Brown. And I'm wondering, like, out of all those people that were tagged, like, I was tagging myself. I didn't know what it was for. And I wasn't probably going to do an interview. But <laughs> she was looking for creators. I was like, I'm tagging myself. But when I saw it was somebody that I knew, I was super excited for you. Of course. Like, if I told you I was going to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm not. I don't care how big I get. I don't care who my clients are. I will never be. A B word. I don't know if we can say that on here. A B but word. I, I will mm-hmm. never be a B word. Like I'm not gonna do that. I'm me. This is this is how I became me. So why would I change that when I when I elevate financially or with clout? Like I, I'm just I'm me. I walk around look like I'm homeless most days. Like my sewing's a little tear up today. Please. Like I just I'm just me, <laughs> and I and I love it. And I'll say this: I didn't really start to blow up until I stopped trying to be someone else on social media mm. so i got on instagram late i got on instagram like 2014 i think it came out like 2008 but when i first got on there like i'm scrolling i'm like oh, okay we're perfect here this is what we do like instagram we're perfect like you know that's what we do so i would have when i go back and look at some of my older stuff i'm like what was that caption like what was i even saying that's not my voice what the heck was i talking about because i was trying to be i was trying to grow followers like i was trying to be popular i would be terrified to go live First time I ever went live on Instagram was in 2020 because mm-hmm. I was I was scared. Like I felt like I had to show up as a certain person because people wouldn't like me. It wasn't until 2020 that I was like, bump it. 
And I started being like completely me, where I am a goofball. Like I forget things. Like I'll be on live and I'll be like, what was I talking about, guys? Because I'll lose my train of thought in the middle. At first, that would freak me out and I would get off. But I'd just be like, y'all, I forget things really easily. Can y'all tell me what I was talking about? And they'll tell me. And then I'll just keep on going. Or the whole thing with shrimp. Like, all my followers know I love shrimp. So when they hop on my lives, they drop shrimp emojis. That's, like, the thing to tell us that they're OG. Like, they instantly yeah. start dropping shrimp emojis. And I love that. It's like we're a family. My yeah. kids used to be running by. Like, my son used to be. He never had clothes on. Judah, I don't know if you're following <laughs> me back then. What's up with he boys had his doing own, it? He had his own hashtag and everything. It's called Freedom Fridays with Judah. He never had clothes on. But he's run by naked. They'd be in the background fighting. I'll be on live telling a story and I'll start crying. I've taken my wig off on live, my lashes. Like, I am just me. And they absolutely love it. And I'm like, all this time, I was trying to be, you know, this perfect, perfect, picture perfect model mm -hmm. person. And all I had to do was be me. And that's when I, my followers started growing. That's when I was just me. And it's so much easier. Your followers started growing because you showed up. Yep. Come like, on, Desiree. Like, your, your followers couldn't follow you. While you was trying to be somebody else. Yep. But when Kayla showed up. When Kayla showed up. Then they like, oh, that's that's who I've been looking for. Somebody who is real. And you know what they say? People, I can show you at least 15 messages recently where people are like, I just watched all your videos and I don't know. I just trust you. Like, can I go ahead and sign up? <laughs> they say that all Kayla. the time. I don't know why I trust you, but I just do. Like, can I give you my money? I just trust you. I trust you. I trust you. And it's because... I'm not, I'm being me. Like, I'm not say, like saying it all right. I'm, you know, I'm goofy. I forget what I'm saying. They're like, you're so genuine. You're so genuine. You're so genuine. I trust you. Here's my money. That's what happens. Just be me. Man, you just, she been dropping gems, man. Like, this can't be your last time, sis. Like, no, it's not. It, I'm going to bring um, dad back and bring my apostle. Okay. I would love that. that. I would love that. I'm going to have to, you know, I'm not wearing makeup that day. Because I feel like that's going to be a whole mm -hmm. box of annoyance. Probably like. not. Like, I don't even know why I wear makeup to church because it's just, it yeah. doesn't make sense. Man, you feel We'll go make like, up list together. Yeah. You feel okay. like family, though. I'll just have to say that. Like, I don't say We that. are family now. What are you yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. You <laughs> really. And it, I think, I think for people that are elevating and going to the next level, um, mm. I'm sorry. There's something else mm. I just thought no, we, you're we fine. didn't talk about. Because as you elevate and as the money comes in, you know how people always say, like, you hear this quote, money isn't everything, money isn't everything. And you're like, uh, let me get a little bit and then I'll tell you. Yeah. <laughs> like, just go on, wire me and then I'll tell you. <laughs> you like, know. money doesn't make you happy. Wire me and then tell me. Like, that's how I used to be. Like, what do you mean? It, surely you hit money equates to happiness. Last year almost took me out. Wow. Last year was the hardest year of my entire life to the point where that pretty hundred thousand dollar car that I was talking about like there were times I'm like if I just veer off to the right a little bit it'll be over and if I'm being completely honest <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something when you walked up to me in Dallas at a Christian conference I was sloppy drunk And I'm not even a drinker. And I was at a Christian conference singing Chandler Moon. <laughs> it was that hard. Wow. It was that hard. And I made the most money I've ever made. Got all the celebrity clients. Talking to Tasha Cobbs backstage. And I felt like my entire world was falling apart. So I'm here to say money truly is not everything. It can help you pay your bills. It can skip you to the front of the line if you want to bribe somebody. But it, I, I learned that there's so many other things <laughs> that are jacked up within me that money can't solve. And I spent so many years in survival mode. Like, how am I going to feed my kids today? She needs $8 for a field trip. How am I going to, what am I going to sell to get $8? Like, the day-to-day -day grind, it was, it was survival mode. So I didn't have time to sit down and be like, hey, what your mom said to you, it kind of jacked you up. You have trauma from that. Mm. You know, you have rejection issues. You don't believe anyone really loves you. You think everyone's lying to you. You have imposter syndrome. There's so many things that started to be revealed, which I believe that God reveals things when it's time to heal from them. But I was like, Lord, can we rebuild them one at a time? Mm. Could you slow down on the revelation? 
because it was like it was almost like it was all at once and it's like I want to just like can you wave a wand and just heal me because we know you can do things instantly Lord and if you're listening God um you still could but I'm like I I either want to be healed or I don't want to be here that's that was where I was that's where I was I was like this is too hard it's too much I either want to be healed or I can't do this anymore I want it all to happen all at once because this is ridiculous. And I, I, I was in therapy. I went, honestly, I feel like therapy started the spiral. I don't think we talk about this enough. Therapy started by spiral. I'm not saying it's bad, but like you got to really be actively working on the things that they teach you or like have a happy place to go to after you get out. Because all I'm doing is like sitting in these deep, dark places that I've talked about. Like, dang, they really did be like that. Like that really happened. Like that's really jacked up. Why did that happen to me? Why? Yeah. And then I started spiraling. So, Last year was really jacked up and I had money. So that's my point. Like y- you still have to work on you and not think that when you get to this magical place in business or whatever the success is, that everything's going to be different because it's not. I know that took a depressing turn, but no, I just feel like no, no, it needs no, to be no, said no, because no, no, people look up to me and they're words. like, you know, <laughs> Oh, Kayla, and they think everything's perfect, but no, like, you know how many crying selfies I have? I'm weird. I take, like, if I'm crying. And you posted like, on Facebook. Well, I have before I have way more than I posted, but I do because, and then people are always like, why would you take a picture while you're crying? Because I document everything. I have a picture of me on my 18th birthday. The elevator stopped, and I'm terrified of an elevator problem, like, terrified. It it happened on my birthday, and I'm crying standing in the elevator on my 18th birthday. And I turned around, I was like, take a picture, because I want memories. So that's why I have crying pictures, but I post them because I want people to know that my life is not perfect. Yeah. People think that success and money, oh, you're good. No. No, I cry in my car a lot. My car is like a little therapy pod. So, you know, life is not perfect. (laughs) No, first of all, man. I want to say thank you for feeling safe enough to expose that you know what i'm saying like yeah. i don't think that thank you because you just kind of confirm what this is like for for us and that's important yeah to me personally that's the goal the safe space for the influencer because yeah. you're definitely an influencer right so there's no judgment here yeah. right suicidal thoughts been there i have to fight depression anxiety i think yeah. i'm probably fighting depression right now yeah because elevation, you don't know what they look like. My, no one's in my family has been doing the things I've been doing. I had to go outside. Coach C- CJ called my nerves about interviewing with Tablet because I thought I was an imp- imposter to the end. Yeah. Like, didn't even have the money to go th- get to Dallas where I met you. Yeah. Like, so it's real. Yeah. Like, people don't understand the process or the backstory of a thing, but they just see the picture. And you are the one. You're the one. So... It's gonna be hard. You're you're the you're the one. You're the one at the front, and you're breaking through for everybody else to come behind you. So it's gonna be hard. We are the ones. We are the ones. That that's actually um, a, a movement that my apostle started. We have shirts. I can bring you one. But um, they say I am the one, and it's <coughs> a reminder. Like I am a generational curse breaker. I am the first in my family, whether they want to acknowledge it or not. I am the first to do what I'm doing on the level that I'm doing it. And I'm doing it for them and for everyone else. And you've done it well. And I want to say congratulations because um, I know you just said therapy. Because I was going to ask you, do you have a therapist? And, yeah, that opens it up. But what people don't tell you is, yeah, you need Jesus, you need therapists, but you also need community. Mm -hmm. And so my prayer for you is that God continues to keep you in community. Because that what that's what maintains the healing. Mm, that's good. And I'm gonna commit to you right now. Like we got each other numbers now. Like there's no reason. There's no reason that you can't be this. I can't be the safe space for you off these cameras. Yeah. Cause they don't. That doesn't matter. Like real talk. Like I'm. I'm talking to you right if now. If we're locked in, there's no switching up? That's no. Desiree, Desiree <laughs> Isn't that what they know, like, like, Desiree, no. Like, I I don't really let people in like that yeah. unless I'm Holy Spirit led because people have hurt me really, really bad. And so yeah. I'm mindful of that when the timing of the assignment, right? Mm. And I'm not calling it an assignment, but just when the timing of when things are supposed to happen. Mm. 
and they happen now because I can, I didn't have an understanding then when I asked you, mm-hmm. but post tab, I have yeah. an understanding of a lot of things that you said. Yeah. Not the money yet, but yeah. we're going to come into agreement that right, I right, right. <laughs> have the money yet. It's on the way. Not yet, but the understanding. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we just need people to just say, hey, I understand. Mm-hmm. And it's okay. Feel this so you won't have to feel it anymore. Yeah. Go through this so you won't have to go through it anymore. Be here. Ooh. So you won't have to be here anymore. Yeah. And you won't have to do it alone. And you're not crazy. No. <laughs> you're not crazy. Because, baby, half of these people, I bet these comments going to be like, I've been there, I've been there. Because we don't talk it until somebody else it. talk first. Yeah. We don't announce it yeah. until somebody else announce it first. And, baby, you just free somebody by being honest about where you were. And, you know, it's not always easy. Like, it's, it's easier for me to talk about stuff like, oh, yeah, back in 2015, I didn't have a car. But for me to be like, yeah, yesterday I was in this place. Last year, I was in this place. When people like knew of me, it's it's difficult, but it's so necessary. Yeah, because yeah. I hear the response of the people when I when I talk like this. I hear that they're in the same places, and why would I, for fear of embarrassment, hold back somebody from their healing, like from breakthrough, from staying on Earth another twenty four hours? Like it's it's that serious. It's that deep. And talk about me. Mm. They talked about Jesus. They talked about <laughs> Jesus. And Indeed. guess what? He was called the Savior for a reason. <laughs> Taylor, I appreciate you, man. Like This has been top two podcasts I've been on. Because Neo is first, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Neo, I'm going to give it to you, brother, because you, you will look, listen. I love, he's so clean cut. He's brilliant. Like he, That man is literally brilliant. And he, when I found out he was only 35, I... Like, I start feeling like, okay, well, I've, I'm just going to start over next lifetime because uh, <laughs> obviously I'm behind. But he's he's just brilliant. Like, just to watch him operate and his team is so excellent and they're all so kind. And, I mean, he's just – he's really brilliant. And I'm honored to be working with him for real. Like, so for you to even say that. Yeah. I Thank you. Y'all heard it from her. Nah. They come from my <laughs> But I want – I, we always allow our guests to leave a final thought. Um, we've talked about a lot. Mm-hmm. And I know some people probably thought they were going to come in and learn how to pose and all that stuff mm-hmm. like that. But I love how God, you know, orchestrates what he wants to yeah. get out and reveal in this space. And so you said a lot. You you went over a lot. But if there was a, anything out of everything that we talked about, if there was one thing that you wanted people to understand out of this podcast, out of this show, what would that be? Honestly, I would love my final words to be a prayer, if you don't mind. Let's go. Can I pray for the people? Yeah. I cry when I pray, so. <coughs> All right, I, I got my tissue right here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Father, I thank you for this opportunity to sit with Jess, and I thank you for all that you're doing in her life. It is evident that your hand is on her, Lord. God, I thank you for every listener that may be hearing this today, God, that may be in a space that I've talked about, that may be going through depression, that may be dealing with anxiety, God, that may not know what their next step is, that may not know what it is that you have for them, God. My prayer today is that you would help them to keep going until they hit that checkpoint, God, that you would help them to keep going so that they know that there's something on the other side, God. Even though it doesn't seem like anything's moving, it doesn't seem like anything's shifting, it seems like they've been stuck, they're in a place that they don't know how to get out of, God, I pray that your hand would be on them, God, I pray that you would help them to understand that you have a plan and that you have a purpose for their life, God, even if it seems like nothing is moving. I pray that you would keep them on the side, God, until they see what it is that you've called them to do, Lord. God, I thank you that they would begin to see it before they see it and that you would help them to walk Mm -hmm. out every plan and purpose that you have for their life, God. We ask that you cover them and that you protect them and that you walk them into the promise. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Such a beautiful prayer. Man. Y'all. Well, well. So well, well, if you want to tie it. (laughs) (laughs) Y'all, this has been great. Kayla, thank you. Desiree. You're welcome. Are you okay? I'm full. (laughs) I like to got up off this seat so many times up in here. Y'all, if y'all haven't gotten it yet, this platform 
is where it's at. Yeah. Because it's God. That's right. And so if you haven't done it, go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe. Tell Kayla how much she blessed you with her transparency. And remember, until next time, until next week, life could be much more simple if you just ask. I'll see you later. Thank you.